<laughs> ah, there you are, you newlywed. Ah, Van Horn. Uh, what you do? <laughs> Disconnect the doorbell so you wouldn't be disturbed. Ah, uh-uh, ah, naughty, naughty. Why, you adult-pated legal louse. Kendall. Why are you putting on your hat? Where do you think you're going? I'm leaving Stephen for good. Oh, but you can't. Do you want those vultures to suspect this marriage isn't on the level? Well, they'll not only break Stephen, they'll send him to jail. You're having a chance, Steve, unless Kendall lives here with you until the storm blows over. All right, Van Horn. For Stephen's sake, I won't go. For my sake? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll grit my teeth and go through with it. But, but do you realize the position this puts me in with Phyllis? Well, what about me? What will I tell my husband? Oh, not you. The good one I'll marry next. Oh, don't worry. You can have the bedroom. I'll sleep on the porch swing. And Van Horn can sleep on the love seat in the hall. Thank you. Good night. Oh, now, look here, Stephen. I don't think... I said you sleep on the love seat. Good night, Van Horn. Well, it reminds me of the case of Dummelwitty versus Kimbletwit. Bedroom, porch swing, love seat. The prudes. <laughs> It is two weeks later. Kendall, played by Lucille Ball, still occupies the bedroom. Stephen, Brian Ahern, still sleeps and dreams of his true love, Phyllis Walden, in the porch swing. And Van Horn, their lawyer and chaperone, played by Porter Hall, spends his nights on the love seat. We find them now a jolly threesome at breakfast. Uh, Coffee's stone cold again. Will you tell me why the orange juice is always hot and the coffee always cold? Well, if you wouldn't spend so much time every morning in the bathroom making yourself pretty... It's my bathroom, and I'll stay in there just as long as I please. Stephen, listen to this. The morning paper says, Combine withdraw suit against Dexter Cement Company. What? <laughs> we won, Stephen, we won. The vultures have given yeah, up. Yeah, let me see that paper. Here, right here. Read it yourself. Oh, Stephen, how wonderful. I told you we'd licked them, didn't I? <laughs> Aren't you happy, Stephen? Why, happy isn't the word. Why, why, this means I'm a free man. It's a reprieve from heaven. Oh, just wait till I break the news to Phyllis. To Phyllis? No, poor girl. She's been so patient and brave and understanding. Uh, Van Horn, how long will it take to get Kendall and me divorced? Hmm? Mm, six weeks in Reno, if neither party contests it. Oh, but this party will contest it plenty. Kendall, you're not going to fight this? I certainly am. Well, in that case, it'll take years. Years? Five. Your best bet is to disappear and be given up for dead. <laughs> So you're going to fight this, are you, Kendall? You like being Mrs. Stephen Dexter. All right. See how much you like it three weeks from now. You can have the house. I'm moving out. You're a grass widow. And from now on, I'm going to be seen in every club and night spot in town with Phyllis Walden. Maybe you'll be glad to divorce me when the gossip columns start laughing you out of town. Goodbye. Stephen! Oh, let him go, Kendall. I couldn't stand another night on that love seat. But, Van Horn, don't you understand? I love him. I really love him. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing you can do legally. Well, this is no time to worry about points of law. I've got to save him from that stupid blonde. Well, in that case, a funnel help versus mingle, my... Wait a minute. I think I've got an idea. Uh, which was very similar to the case of Gimble Feather versus Dingle Group. Uh, the trial judge based his decision on the case of Mingle Puss versus Weagle Cook and ruled that... Hello? Hello? Uh, Acme Escort Service? Well, do you happen to have something that's tall, dark, and handsome who is absolutely and irresistible to something small, blonde, and moronic? You have? His name is Jose? Well, will you send him over COD? Yes, the address is Mrs. Kendall Dexter, East 54th Street. Riverview Apartments. Ah, the beautiful music. She reminds me of home, Mrs. Dexter, in far-off South America. Never mind putting on the act for me, Jose. Save it till you meet Phyllis. Here comes a head waiter. Tell him we want Mr. Dexter's table. Si. Good evening, monsieur. You have the reservation? Senor Dexter's party, please. Oh, we, oui. this way, please. Ah, I so love this one club. It's so, so expensive. So is Phyllis, but Stephen will see that you have plenty of spending money. You mean your husband will pay for my campaign? Yes, only he won't know it. He never looks at what he's signing when I make out his checks, and since this is for his own good, he might just as well pay for it. Here's their table. Uh, hello, Stephen. Hello, Phyllis, darling. I'm so sorry we're late. What? Say, what is this? Oh, now, don't be cross, dear. We got held up in traffic. Phyllis, 
May I present Senor Don Jose de Baganza? How do you do? How do you do? And this is Stephen, my husband. In South America, we have nothing so beautiful as you, Senorita. Pardon me. She says I'm Stephen. Oh. Oh, uh, excuse me. How do you do? Have you ordered yet, Poppy? No, Poppy has not ordered. What are you trying to do to me now? Who's that grasshopper with you? Biggest damn and bridge man in South America. You can't get away with this. Uh, well, Phyllis, <laughs> we'd uh, better leave if we're going to make that show. Why, Senor Braganza, you mean you eat Zimmerman's cream cheese just because my picture's on it? I eat four. No, six cases, beautiful one. Uh, Phyllis. Uh... What? Oh, yes, Stephen. Uh, if we don't go, we'll, we'll miss the show. Oh, darling. we can see it some other night. Oh, certainly we? you can. Besides, you've got bad write-ups. Well, you don't even know which show we're going to. Well, that simply goes to prove my point, doesn't it? Tell me, Jose, have you bought any polo ponies lately? Polo ponies? Hmm. Oh, polo ponies. No. <laughs> I thought I read you had some sent up from Brazil. Oh, just a few strings. Oh, I'd love to see them. May I, Jose? Oh, alas. I send them back to my fazenda. Fazenda? That is, um, a quinta, uh, errada, uh, hacienda. I suppose that's a farm. Farm? Tell her how long it takes to ride across it, Jose. Oh, half a day. That's a little one. Uh, would you like to dance, Phyllis? Well, I... Oh, I'm so they... sorry. I've already asked Phyllis what is dancing or Dexter. You don't mind. Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> Have a good time. Come, beautiful one. I shall show you the real way to dance the tango like we do from South America. Stephen, don't look so disturbed, dear. It's all in fun. In fun? If he squeezes our hand once more, I'm going to slip him a double chocolate Mickey Finn. Why, he's a lounge lizard, a parlor snake. Where did you meet him, and what are you up to? Are you listening to him? Are you up to him? Well, Jose, how are we doing? Wonderful, Senora Dexter. Here are my expense bills for the month of May. Mm, apartment at the Ritz, rent of automobile, luncheons at Pierre, ring. Ring, Jose? Ring on the telephone. Five hundred of them. Oh. June was an expensive month for Jose. Theater tickets, horse show tickets, breakfast for two. Breakfast, Jose? Oh, we only rode horseback in the park one morning. Oh. What's the matter with you, Jose? Here it is July. Hasn't Phyllis weakened yet? She is almost giddy from dizziness with love for me. The day before yesterday, she insulted me. Yesterday, she slapped my face. And today, ah, today we shall see what we shall see. Hello, Kendall. I've been looking all over. Go away, Jose. It's all over. We've lost. He came in an hour ago and said, since I won't divorce him, he'll ask for an annulment. Then he sent for Phyllis. Phyllis loves me. She will not come here. Yeah, well, she's in the other room with him right now, and he's asking her to marry him. What? I will kill him. I will kill them both. Two times, twice. Come. You shall watch the slaughtering. Phyllis, I'm here. You're Jose. Jose! Get out of here. You cannot win my feelings, Senor Dexter. Never. She loved me madly. Since when? Since always. Since time began and the world was damp. And I was a bullfrog. And she was a cow frog. Isn't that beautiful, Stephen? He always says the most romantic things. Phyllis, you owe it to yourself to find out more about this man. Where does your money come from, Senor Braganza? I told you once, Stephen. Yes, I know. Now I want him to tell me. It comes from... Uh, from the cement business. Oh, Stephen. Oh. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I didn't know you were getting up a game of gin rubbing. Now, what do you want, Van Horn? Me? Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I, I was just going over these bills. Oh, hello, everybody. And there's quite a flock of funny checks here. I guess you and I better be running along, Jose. Yes, you will excuse us quick, please. Oh, no, Kendall. Now, I won't take a minute. Now, about these checks, Stephen, uh, they all seem to be made out to a party named Jose de Braganza. Is that your new tailor? Did you say Ooh. Jose de Braganza? Here, 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 let me see those chicks. Well, goodbye, everybody. You stay where you are, Kendall. Well, this is the greatest bungo game of all time. So, Senor Braganza, you do get your money from cement. My cement. Cement mixer, putty putty. <laughs> Jose, what do those checks mean? Phyllis, darling, it looks bad, but it couldn't be worse. Oh, Jose. I knew you were a liar, but I didn't know you were a crook. Senor Dexter, I challenge you to a duel. 
I cannot receive such an insult to your wife. Oh, you can, can't you? You, you, you cut-rate Casanova. Will you try taking this? Oh. Look, could I hold somebody's oh. coat? Oh. Oh. Get some water, Mr. Van Horn. Mm. Oh, Jose, Jose, darling. Are you hurt? I will kill him to pieces. Well, I don't know why. I don't know why you should fight over Kendall. She's not worth fighting over. Oh, I'm not, am I? Why, you, you... Ah! Kendall, you, you, you let Phyllis alone. Oh, my poor little Phyllis. Here, I will kiss this You, you keep away from Phyllis. 